Currently, there's an estimated about 5.5 million Americans that are affected with Alzheimer's disease. And above the age of 85, actually, one in every three seniors is affected. And right now, for patients with Alzheimer's disease, there really isn't a universal cure. So in Dr. Michaela Gallagher's lab, we're looking at cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease. Um, and cognitive impairment is the stage that often precedes Alzheimer's disease. So what we aim to examine is the differences in animal models that we see between animals that exhibit intact cognition versus those that are cognitively impaired. The brain is composed of billions of neurons. And when we talk about excitation and inhibition, we're saying with excitation, the neurons in the region are firing um, quite a lot, actually. And when we're talking about inhibition, the neurons in that region aren't firing. So to maintain successful cognition, it's important to maintain this balance between excitation and inhibition so that the brain can operate its computational processes for separating memories or completing memories and retrieving and learning and memory in general. We know that there exists this sort of hyperactivity that happens in aging brains. So our hypothesis is that to maintain intact cognition, there needs to be increased inhibition to sort of battle this hyperactivity. I really got interested in Alzheimer's disease and cognitive impairment back in high school when I ended up volunteering for the VA hospital in the Alzheimer's nursing ward. I came to realize how not only fragile the population that they were, but also how easy it was to just ignore them, to in, in a way almost dehumanize them. And so I started feeling this sort of sense of duty and the sense of purpose. It made me realize that as an individual, the power that I can have in impacting somebody's life. I wanted to understand Alzheimer's disease and, and, and tackle it from a multifaceted approach. And in receiving support from the Phyllis F. Alpstein Fund, I've really been able to accelerate the pace at which my research project has taken place. If I could participate and play any role at all in you know, somehow defeating this uh, terrible illness, it'll be such satisfaction for me that it would be probably the accomplishment of a lifetime. And in meeting the Alpstein family, it really put that personal touch towards understanding the importance of what I was doing, not only the, on the lives of the patients themselves, but on the whole family. I wanted to come to Johns Hopkins because of their focus on research, um, and mostly the focus on taking um, undergraduate research to the next level. And as an undergraduate at Hopkins, it's been an incredible experience, a truly rewarding journey, not just in an academic sense, but to also create and foster lifelong and meaningful relationships with people here. So my overall goal moving forward in the future is to hopefully become a geriatric neurologist. I really do want to take not only this research that I'm doing, but all the work and understanding that I have of Alzheimer's disease and apply it back. So ultimately my goal is to continue working with these patients and dedicate my entire career towards them.